In this video, let us talk about why object orientation is a programming approach that is preferred by many developers nowadays. Also, this is a beginner level course. We will be examining some of the reasons why object oriented programming is uh, required in a casual way as well as some of the concepts that is leading to object oriented programming such as complexity, chaos and order. Let's just start with an example like I mean a simple exercise we are trying to do in order to explain the concept of complexity and in this case let me first go into the case one like uh, we have got two groups here containing certain amount of certain number of dots in them so is it possible to tell which group contains more number of dots in case one it is easier to tell just by looking at them we understand that group b contains more number of dots than group a it is obvious but when it comes to this case where the number of dots are more and they are scattered it is not very easy for us to tell whether group A or group B contains more number of dots we really have to count in order to say that before explaining this much further let me go to case 3 that is this one and uh, in this case, uh, I have almost the same number of dots as uh, A and B, but they are arranged and there is an order. And they are arranged in uh, or, uh, rows and columns. Here also it is arranged in rows and columns. And by looking at uh, both of these groups, I can say that there is one extra dot here. That means Uh, this group, group A, has got uh, more number of dots because, because of this extra dot which is obviously present there. So, another technique I can employ here is something like I had to come here and count it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. And the same thing here. So, I can say that group A contains 17 and group B contains 16 because I counted. So this particular case, uh, case 2, is uh, a very peculiar thing that uh, uh, it is not very easy for us to tell which group contained more number of dots just by looking at the dots in case 2. The reason is there is no order, there is no indication on how many dot it contains as in uh, this case if you, because we have an order here it is easier to tell that this group contain, contains more number of dots so this is a case of chaos basically and uh, there is a complexity resulting from a uh, greater number of dots also unlike this case one in case one even if there is no order it was easier for us to tell because of uh, lesser number of dots which are present there. And uh, when it comes to this case also it's easier because we have a clear indication like 17 and 16. We know how to deal with 17 and 16 such numbers. So either we had to find out an order out of chaos or we had to go for certain techniques like counting in order to tackle complexity at uh, greater levels. And this is just a fancy diagram showing how we as human beings got a certain difficulty managing complexity and it totally breaks down our ability to manage complexity totally breaks down at certain points. So complexity or chaos it's put in x axis on x axis and here y axis describes our understanding um, about a particular problem. 
So when complexity increases from 10, 20, etc. Uh, to 100, for example, these are not absolute values, of course. Uh, uh, when complexity at, a, at its minimum, we have a greater understanding and it, it comes down at one point, it totally breaks down and we have no further choice. But uh, when complexity reach, uh, reaches at further levels, we that is where we landing in moon or here we can manufacture a car. Those things are happening, like when the complexity increases and also our understanding about a particular problem in hand and we are able to tackle that, uh, somehow we are able to make wonderful things. So this racing graph, rather than it going like this, we are able to manage complexity in such a way. If that is happening, we are definitely employing certain techniques or methodologies, etc. So the point to note here is we as human beings, I am reiterating that uh, we have got uh, human limitations, understanding complexity beyond certain levels. It totally breaks down at certain point in complexity. And in order to tackle that, we have to employ certain, techni te certain techniques or methodologies. So from the, from the previous slides, and examples what we can infer right now are the below points like uh, our ability as human beings breaks at certain points where complexity increases that is obvious we saw that from the previous example and uh, we have techniques to tackle complexity of course we explained it in the previous exercise it was about counting or arranging in certain other cases maybe it can be a pictorial diagram representation explaining modules and sub modules and also this is an ex uh, this is an uh, this is a point to be noted that uh, uh, when it comes to execution of code by a computer it is at the machine level at the bottom most level it is all about ones and zeros but it is very difficult for us to think in terms of ones and zeros writing code in such a way would be very very difficult and that itself is a reason high level languages evolved and uh, you know how it is uh, like programming in a high level language it's rather easy but still there were certain gaps and that is where object orientation in fact evolved and there is something about the previous examples like the groups containing dots and counting them that is not the real issue what object orientation was trying to address rather object orientation was trying to address real world problems most of the software we are using currently are simulations of our real world scenarios something that has been done with pen and paper in the older or older days uh, we are trying to um, address the same problem using computer and programs and when it comes to this particular thing, I'm not talking about counting, counting the number of dots. I'm not talking about that thing, but I'm talking about managing complexity in our real life. Actually, human cognitive studies, they state that, they show that we are handling, com com handling <coughs> we are managing complexity in our daily life through the use of object orientation, maybe unknowingly. We consider things as objects around us rather than um, thinking about them as ones and zeros or machine language instructions. That is the way naturally things are happening to us. And because most of the enterprises level applications are simulations or scenarios we are trying to automate in real world, People started thinking in such a way, why can't we apply the same principles in programming? And hence happened object-oriented programming as a programming paradigm. Yeah, there are people who believe that the world around us is a computer script being executed by a very giant computer. 
So the lengthy script is, is in execution and uh, the, the manif real world manifestation is the objects and things around us and the interaction, all those things are just because of that script execution. And there are people who uh, strongly oppose such an idea as well. Uh, uh, but this particular issue, whether the world really is a script in execution is not our concern right now. Our concern is something like we, we are using it as an analogy. Maybe there is a possibility like uh, these people who are claiming that the script in execution theory is, uh, I mean, they are correct. But at the same time, at least normal people like us, we don't believe uh, or we don't at least look into things in such a way. When when I uh, try to explain things, I just will say that I typed something on my keyboard. I just drank my coffee, something of that nature. We are dealing with objects. We see that objects are containing another, uh, other objects. We see that objects are interacting with other objects. That's a way, that's a way we try to interpret the world and that is the way we are able to manage uh, higher levels of complexity in our daily life. And this itself is a, a problem that object orientation is trying to solve. You can think that it is a programming script in execution, but at the same time you have an option to believe that it is uh, objects which are interacting together. So which, which way you will take is up to you, but at the same time, many of us developers are comfortable thinking about objects in action rather than looking into 20,000 lines of code. An interaction like a bank and an ATM, ATM has a connectivity with the bank and somebody is withdrawing some money from that one to book a movie ticket. That is a fairly nice example and uh, it is easy to understand as well. So we don't consider things at a very low level, just like we don't say like two atoms collided and electron interactions. We are not trying to explain things in such a way when it comes to our real life. We can just explain uh, some of the natural, natural, some of the natural things happening around us, we can explain in terms of object orientation. For example, I can have a class called vehicle, and I can have sub subclasses for that one called car, or I can have another class called train, etc. And it is uh, uh, important to note that these are classes. And also this has got a real world instances like called train 1, train 2 and car has got a instances called car 1, car 2, etc. Car 2 might be containing an engine type 1. This one, car 1 contains an engine type type 2, take 3, etc. etc. I am not explaining much about this. Uh, in the future videos, we will be examining these kind of con these concepts in depth. And uh, many of us like object orientation because object orientation helps tackle complexity of course. Uh, because I explained already like uh, when, when we try to do some program at the enterprises level application it is about uh, we are trying to simulate our automated system which was using pen and paper already. And those kind of scenarios as we think of those uh, in, in, the real world, in the real world scenarios as we are interpreting them as objects and interactions between them. We can apply the same techniques in programming languages and hence resulted object-oriented programming as a paradigm. It's easy to explain and you ask your diagrams between fellow developers and domain experts. And also object orientation is giving us better maintainable code. This was one of the very, uh, very recent uh, why object orientation evolved as a programming methodology because earlier software uh, was not really maintainable because it was uh, not object oriented uh, because it was not done in an object oriented fashion and and the uh, organizations had to uh, to they had to spend a lot of money to maintain their code 
and it is easy to document as well. I'm not explaining that uh, as well too much. It's fairly the reason and uh, why I will explain the thing is something is we have difficulty to explain things in terms of coding and machine level instructions. So we rather go for objects, a car, engine and a driver and a list of all of them, a collection of all the systems or something like that. And that's uh, almost the end of the course. Thank you so much.